What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Copart walk around. We're gonna rush through this pretty quick because I gotta get things done today. I wanna give a big shout out to Copart behind me for allowing me to do this. Really appreciate all you guys and gals here. All of you for watching, thank you so much. Now let's jump into it. We're starting this one out with an 06 Dodge Dakota. Quad truck, what? Wait, this isn't a Dodge Dakota. Very strange looking. I guess I haven't seen a Dakota in a while. Uh, <laughs> I actually kind of like the little thing. It's it's kind of a little truck, but it's not too little. It's kind of a, oh crap. Oh man, I didn't see that in the pictures. Dang it. Well, I started this one off wrong, huh? Man, I, I like this little thing though. I mean, I've seen Dakotas before. I'm not saying I've never seen a Dakota, just I don't know what it is about this one. Does it have like a ground effects kit or a, a, a package or something? Because it looks, uh, it looks sharp. This is a sharp looking Dakota, man. Too bad about that roof. But hey, I mean, the roof can be cut off and replaced, right? Dang, no, that's, oh, ooh, good God, never mind. This thing is rough. This thing is real rough. Whoo, 146,000 miles on the odometer. I mean, I gotta start it. Oh man, it sounds horrible. Exhaust leaks. This truck smells bad. <laughs> I mean, it smells real bad. Come on. it's starting to idle down some it sounds a little better there we go there we go calm down it's a little v8 it wants to be a big v8 try so hard to sound mean <laughs> yeah i'm sorry ladies and gentlemen i thought this was a i thought this was a nice truck but uh this thing it's just it's trash man this is one that's been used and abused I have absolutely no interest in this one. I should have looked at the rest of the pictures. Oh well, let's move on. Next on my list, who doesn't love the Acura RSX? I love this car. This is an 04 RSX. Clean, clean car. I don't know why it's here. Oh, I, <laughs> I see it. I see it. I didn't. Ah, man. That sucks. The good news though is it's not, well, yeah, it is. I was gonna say it ain't too bad, but when you stand like here and you, <laughs> you see the ripple effect, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Dang. Oh man. I got so excited when I saw this. Oh, it's a stick shift too? Of course it is. It's an S. <sighs> I gotta start it up. Let's hear it run. I guarantee it runs just fine. It's in neutral. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Check engine light is on. Take a peek under the hood real quick. Check the AC. I heard the compressor kick in. And there's the air conditioning. AC is nice. Oh, look at that. We got a car full of money. If you buy this car, look at all the money you get in it. Wow. Cup holders. You get a uh, you get whatever these are. I don't know what that is, but you get some of those and you get a little uh little LED flashlight. It works. Cool beans. Cool beans. This is actually a nice little car. Somebody must have taken really good care of this because it's old but it is in just phenomenal condition as far as the body and interior are concerned it looks great i mean aside from that quarter panel but there's nothing saying you can't just drive it man you could put this right back on the road a car this old you could have this rebuilt today you could re have it rebuilt today and yeah it's got some cosmetic damage but i mean there's nothing stopping you from driving this 
an AEM cold air intake. She runs great, truly. Man, that's a beautiful car. I love this uh, this lip right here too. I mean, I'm sure that's aftermarket, right? Comment below and tell me if this lip right here is aftermarket. You can see it's coming apart a little bit, but that lip just really, that makes it look real aggressive. 130,000 miles, golly, man. I really like this one. I really like this one a lot. But I say that about all the cars, so. You know what we're gonna do we're gonna move on to the next one maybe this one isn't so rebuildable uh this is a 2019 toyota corolla and man it's got so much more damage than i realized uh <laughs> it's by no means carnage dare i even say that word but uh yeah she's rough man this is uh I don't know what happened to it. I don't know what it hit or what hit it. Maybe it swung out, you know, spun out, went sideways, and crashed into something, I guess. But it almost looks like it rolled. Doesn't it? Doesn't this look like a rollover? The way we've got this scraping all down the top. I think this thing went on its top. I do. I mean, look at it. All the high spots on the top are scraped up. Same thing on the side here. I think it hit something. It flipped and roll and rolled over and just just scooted down on its top 5,000 miles wow this thing was brand new it was brand spanking new there's glass all over the place here so i'm gonna be real careful <sighs> but you know what it's a toyota so it's going to run don't you think i think it's gonna fire right up There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That's that Toyota quality, man. <laughs> Took a licking and keeps on ticking. I bet 99.9% .9 of you don't know where that phrase came from. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Yeah, that's a little, little too old school for most of you folks. Man, not even a check engine light. The thing flipped over on its roof like at a probably a pretty good rate of speed judging from all the damage. I'm, I'm gonna say this thing, this thing flipped, rolled hard. And you know what? I, <laughs> if you clean up this glass, look, even the backup camera is still working. Goes right into gear. Clean up this glass, vacuum it out, put a window in it. This car, this car run a long time. <laughs> it may not be pretty, but she'll run for you. I, I do. I love Toyotas, man. I do. They're great cars. Here we got a 2015 Challenger. And I thought this was something worth looking at. Although I, I have to admit, I knew from the pictures it's most likely going to be a V6. And now that I'm standing here in person, I'm pretty much 100% certain it's going to be a V6. She obviously took a some kind of a hit to the front. Maybe it was a low hit and I just haven't figured that out yet. You guys are kind of going to figure this out with me. CarMax, the way car buying should be. 70,000 miles, so she's got some miles on her. Inner tie rod damage. That's nice that they list that stuff on some of these, you know, so you know what you're getting into. So obviously, it took a, it took a hit up here. The front suspension is damaged a little bit. Header panels probably busted up. The headlights are long gone by now. Inner fenders are gone. Get this hood pop for you real quick. And you got that massive 3.6 liter. Whew. Well, let me tell you something, I think it'll beat a Hemi all day long. Yeah, so you can see the uh, the insurance company, the body shop star, taking this apart to assess the damage. But the good news is because they pulled all this out, you can see the frame rails very clearly. So it'll be easy to tell if you got any frame damage, at least up front. Crash bar looks good. Header panel is completely toast. It's all cracked and broken down there. It's hard to see, but down here, it's cracked and broken. So the header panel is going to need to be replaced. Everything that was over here is gone, completely missing. 
very strange. Other than the header panel, the fender apron looks straight, but right here, you can see the insurance company marked to let you know there was damage here. I can't really read what that says. A PR or RPR, I can't tell. I think this is telling you to replace the header panel and to bend this fender apron out, excuse me, just a hair. It looked like it bent just the edge of the header panel, or the, sorry, not the header panel, uh, this fender apron in just a tad bit. I don't see any riding on this side at all. What is this? A block heater? That's a block heater. Huh, must have been a northern car or something from Alaska. I don't know. So honestly, the damage under here doesn't look that bad. Honestly. I, I'm a little confused as to what kind of an accident would have caused this. But, I mean, obviously, this fan, this fender is trash. Needs inner fender liners. Uh, the tie rod alignment. The bumper, I think, is... I think the bumper may be okay. You could probably save this bumper. The headlights may be in the trunk if you're lucky. A fender on this side. And that's it. Does it have coolant in it still? It does. It does. It's still, it's still full of coolant. So this thing will probably fire right up. Let's try it out. I mean, I know it's a V6. It's nothing to get overly excited about, but I mean, this is a very easy repair. At least it appears that way. Push to start. It's optioned pretty nicely. It really is. This is a nice looking car. Oil change required. AC is on. Let's see how that does. Go put it into gear real quick. Okay, backup sensors are working. And it went into reverse. Went right into drive. No problem. All right. Not bad. We got a little nav, nav system here. That's kind of shoddy, but it's a nav system. <laughs> Yeah, that don't look all that great. I do wonder if the headlights or any other parts are in here. We got lots of uh, lots of little bits and pieces here. But what I'm wondering about is the headlights, because I don't see anything that would tell me that the headlights didn't survive the accident. And they're not particularly cheap. We got some, the crash bar cover is in here. We got an air deflector and some other pieces back here. I don't see the headlights though. I guess what I'm wondering about is those headlights. Ah, aha, here we go. Here we go. Lots of parts. There's your inner fenders, which look like they're probably okay. Got a few broken tidbits. Again, uh, these are to push air into the car. Those are broken. No big deal. Oh, the headlight is crunched. Oh, man. Okay. Well, that's one headlight gone. How about the other one? What do you think? This headlight looks like the tabs are still there. Uh, it took a little impact. You can see they rode on it. This headlight is fine. That headlight is completely reusable. All right, not bad. So you got to get a headlight, but a lot of your money has just been saved right there because it comes with a lot of the parts that you're going to need to put this back together. This is very doable. Very, very doable. The AC finally got cold. And it runs well, and it goes right into gear. Yeah, I'd have no issue with this car. Obviously, steering wheel sitting straight. Let's see how bad these tires are, because this one is sitting off to the right pretty good. And this one is straight. So yeah, <laughs> gonna have pretty major tire rod damage down there. I think the hood is probably damaged as well, or maybe the hood hinges are damaged. This fender is way off. Yeah, there's going to be some work here. It'd be interesting to get all this apart and see what's under there and find out what the actual damage is. There may be something more to it that we're just not seeing. Because to me, this looks like this would be a really simple rebuild. Very easy fix. Here I have a 2013 Mercedes-Benz GL554 Matic. This is nice. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, man. This is nice. It's a flood. It's a flood car. It's a non-runner. The water line was pretty high. Uh... At least that's what they listed right here. The water line is obviously from the ground here. That's uh, that's pretty high up. Oh man! And leave it to uh, you gotta love European cars, man, because they always put your most sensitive electronics in the floor. 
Uh, they've been doing this for, for ages. This is nothing new. So if you leave a window down, I mean, that, that's the thing that bothers me about these European cars. All right, if you leave a window down in the car and it were to pour and you forgot about it, right? A summer storm or a spring storm or something. Yeah, the window's down, you forgot. The interior, the first thing's gonna happen is the floor fills up with water. Now they did a really good job of cleaning this out. It looks like uh, whoever got a hold of it cleaned it out pretty quickly, but look at the damage, okay? Uh, you can see it's all rusted. So whatever this piece is here, this is shot. You know, that's gotta be replaced. There's gonna be all kinds of rust and corrosion down here, as you can see, look. Yeah. Jeez, man. <sighs> this would be interesting if I had more money. If I had more money, I would absolutely buy this just to see if we can get it running. I mean, it's gonna need a lot of parts and we don't know if it was running when it when it went underwater. But did I say GL550? This says GL63, okay. I'm pretty sure the listing may be wrong. Either that or I got it wrong. I'm almost certain this said it was a GL550. It did, right there. It says it's a GL550. It's a GL63. Looks like somebody has already made their armhole here so that they could pop the hood. Unfortunately, because of the way they've dismantled the dash, I cannot get the hood release to pop. I can't get through that door without peeling off their stickers, which I'm not gonna do. Um, but there's the hood release down there and you can see the dash is all taken apart. I have tried to pull on it and everything and I just can't get it open. I, I really want to, I really want to. I think I'm gonna try it one more time for you guys. See, look at this again, more electronics under the seats. Yeah, come on. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> oh, man. Cars cars get me excited. <laughs> is that wrong? Is that wrong? You comment below and tell me is that. Woo. <laughs> boy. <sighs> what a thing of beauty. It truly is. That's a thing of beauty right there. Man, oh, man. I, I would I would be willing to put my money where my mouth is on this one. I would. Aside from needing all the internal sensors, I would bet money this was not running when it got flooded. I would. Let's take a look. Yeah, see down in there? I don't know how well you can see, but I don't see anything. No sign of water intrusion. No dirt. Okay. I don't believe water got in this vehicle. I really don't. I don't. I think if you were to replace all of the uh, damaged components, the electronics that go under the seats there, get a fresh battery in it, I think this thing would fire up. And let me tell you something else about this. It doesn't smell like a flood. I don't know how they manage that, but it doesn't smell like a flood at all. You you wouldn't know getting in this this vehicle that it ever got wet. You know what it smells like? It smells like Mercedes leather. You guys know that smell, right? It's It's a unique smell. That Mercedes leather, man. Oh, she smells good. Smells nothing like a flood. Got a lot of bolts under here. What do these go to? Those are big bolts. The seats? Surely not. The seats bolt, seat bolts aren't that big. I wonder if they ended up having to pop out drive shafts. I bet they did. I bet they pulled the drive shafts to tow it. If they did, though, where are the drive shafts? You know what I mean? <laughs> We got lots of carpeting and pieces back here. There looks like an e-brake lever. Yeah, they tore her apart, that's for sure. <sighs> I wish we could get up under here a little better. The dang thing is sitting so low to the ground right now that it makes it difficult to get a view of anything underneath it. Uh, yeah, drive shafts have been torn out. Yep, yep. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like the drive shafts are out. It looks like they disconnected them and they held them in place with, uh, I can't get you under there. It's just too low to the ground. But the drive shafts are still under there. They're just held in with uh, some kind of like, it's not rope, I don't know. Like those tie down straps, they're held in with the straps. They're just disconnected. So that's what I thought those bolts went to. And it looks like I was right. You don't want to pull something like this with the drive shaft still attached, especially if it's stuck in park. That could be a big, big problem. So at least they did it right, man. 
this could be a win. Whoever gets this, I think somebody's going to score on this. And if you're a viewer, a subscriber, and you get this, please let me know how it turns out because I would really love to know. And here's one of my favorite cars of all time, a 2011 Chevy Cruze, man. Hey, I love these cars. This one is not a salvage or anything. This list is normal wear and tear. And honestly, it, it looks pretty dang good, man. It really does. This rocker panel took a little bit of a hit down here. That sucks, but I wouldn't have fixed that little bitty dent neither. It costs a lot of money. Door still operates fine. Tires are good. It's an LT. I don't think this is going to have the uh, the 1.4 turbo, 140,000 miles. I think this is going to have the uh, the 1.8. And honestly, I don't I don't care for the 1.8 at all. I just don't like it. I don't like timing belt motors in general. Now, of course, that's personal preference, but I'll say this: it's been my personal experience. Oh, it is the turbo. How about that? Okay. All right. It's been my experience that timing chains are just more reliable than uh, than timing belts. I mean, timing belts require pretty significant service every 60 to 100,000 miles, whereas chains generally last forever. Well, close to forever. She looks good, man. She really does. She looks like a decent car. Let's see if it fires up. It says it runs and drives. It's dirty. That's nothing a good detail can't take care of. All right. Find the hole. Oh, wow. Yeah, she fired right off, didn't she? Dang. This is actually very clean. Got an ABS light. A tire pressure light. <laughs> well, I'll say we got a tire pressure light because the tire is at 24 PSI, 23 PSI, 23. Okay. So it looks like one of the TPMS sensors may not even be reading. Hood is open. Average fuel economy, 32.1. That's not bad. This is a decent little car. I actually really like the air conditioning. is ice cold. It runs great. Does the uh, important window work? Yes. Now, what does concern me is the transmission. A lot of people will say that the transmission in these cars are junk. I tend to disagree. It idles awful high. Hopefully that goes down here in a minute. Uh, that could be a PCV issue, that valve cover that we did in my cruise recently. It'll cause that. But it's not that it's not so much that the transmissions in these are junk. It's that people do not service their transmission. And then when the transmission goes out, they blame the car, the manufacturer for it. No. I serviced my transmission at the dealership on time. Scheduled maintenance. I get it done. And I've got almost 200,000 miles on my Chevy Cruze on the original motor and original transmission and just now replaced the turbocharger. So, hey, don't go blaming a car for your lack of maintenance. You know what I mean? It's not the car's fault you didn't take care of it. I would be concerned about the tranny on this. That's the only thing. With 140,000 miles, it's at that right miles, you know, at the right mileage for the transmission to have gone out because it was not properly maintained. And I always get the BG treatment on my tranny as well. I don't know. I don't know. It's a decent looking car. It runs great. But it's something I'm definitely going to... I'm going to take some time and really think about this one. Comment below. Tell me what you think of the 11 Cruze. Last one on the list today is an 04 Land Rover Range Rover. These are the ones everybody says not to buy, right? 125,000 miles. Everybody says stay away from these. I, anytime I've thought about buying one, I've had... You guys have gotten on there and just warned me. Some of you have even begged me to stay away from it. This was listed as a repossession. So run and drive. And look, it's not sitting on the ground. And well, actually the back is sitting way high and the front is sitting a little bit low. I was hoping that maybe this has had the uh, that active suspension removed and perhaps... Uh, replaced with just regular struts. Let's see if we can start her up here. Uh, no power, right? Of course. <sighs> yeah, no power. Well, dang. This is going to be a quick video then, because I'll tell you right now, I'm not touching a Land Rover slash Range Rover uh, without being able 
to start it first and check that uh ah, ah ah wait a minute these look like pretty fresh bolts on the suspension right here don't they they do they do hum 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 what do you think what do you think somebody wrote on this i can't read it removed and replaced front and rear uh dang it somebody wrote on this and i can't i can't read it front and rear brake front oh here we go front and rear brake something wiper rear wiper blade off 119,000 miles and that was in 15 so it had 119,000 miles in 15 it's got 125,000 miles now, so it's had 10,000 miles in four years. That's concerning. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's real concerning. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think this is going to be a short one. We're just going to walk away from it. Because that's what you should do with any Land Rover, Range Rover, is, is walk away quickly. So that's going to be it for this walk around, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you all watching. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a thumbs up. Comment your thoughts below. Don't forget to share the video. That really helps the channel. And hey, if you're not currently subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel. Follow me over on Instagram. You see a lot of stuff going on way before you see it on YouTube. That's Auto Auction Rebuilds on Instagram. Stay safe out there, everybody. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.